Now, in the global health sector, many countries have been experimenting with digital financial services and have succeeded as well. With this, health providers can sustainably reach more people with their services thanks to the cost savings on the more efficient uh, payment mechanisms. Low income customers can now be able to afford potentially life saving treatments thanks to digital savings, credit, and remittance products. Furthermore, Digital micro insurance products serve as safety net for low income customers, preventing them from falling further into the poverty as a result of medical emergency. Now to discuss this, we have with us Mr. Samir Agarwal, who is a senior finance professional, having more than 25 years of experience working in India in blue chip companies and who's currently working with Manipal hospitals, managing over 27 hospitals, about 7,000 beds in over 10 states. So welcome uh, to Business World Healthcare, Mr. Samir Agarwal. Uh, uh, thank you for having me. Uh, Mr. Agarwal, my first question to you is that managing hospitals is a humongous task. Managing costs, generating revenues while keeping the facilities most modern. Has digitization of finance uh, brought in efficiencies in the revenue generation payments uh, directly through seekers as well as through insurance companies? Uh, thank you for having me uh, on this prestigious platform, Mr. Arbinder. Uh, very, very pertinent question. Uh, just wanted to give a context to the answer before we uh, deep dive into what you have asked me. Uh, uh, is that setting up a hospital in India is a humongous task, as you rightly said. Uh, it's a cost. Uh, you put in the money and then actually the patients walk in through your door. It's a B2C. You can't advertise about your hospital. So it's actually all cost in and then you wait for the revenues to sort of come up. Setting up a hospital in India is almost like a two to three crore rupees per bed, including land cost, setting up a hospital in private healthcare space. So it's a very expensive, uh, uh, you know, uh, piece of equipment. Uh, all the equipments are imported and hence the cost and the revenues become very critical uh, for you to grow in scale. Uh, the digitization has really uh, helped. Uh, I'll tell you how digitization in finance and healthcare has helped. Uh, when we act, and uh, to be honest, uh, COVID actually helped that scenario as well because the adoption of digital uh, went through the roof, uh, uh, not through demonetization, but more because of COVID in my view. Uh, but we started our journey in Manipal uh, through setting up uh, a digital shade service almost two years ago. Uh, the adoption became very, very fast during COVID. Uh, so today we have set up a digital shade service center internal. It's in-house uh, digital shade service. Uh, the vision being that the teams at the hospital should be focused on delivering patient care and delivering value to the patients as well as to the organization. All the transactions which are monotonous and like accounts payable, payments are all centralized in Bangalore. Uh, so what has that done is that has taken out time for the teams at the hospitals uh, to be able to value add to the operations at the hospital. So that has actually in a way helped us uh, in terms of managing the humongous amount of compliance as well as uh, the B2C transactions uh, being very small in nature as well to manage the number of patients that is uh, walking into the team. Uh, the payment system has also helped the customers because uh, the government sort of, uh, you know, uh, approved uh, telecom uh, telemedicine uh, as well as video consultations became the law. And hence all the payment mechanism today, like PTM using Google Pay, every everything has been sort of uh, automated on the uh, app Manipal uh, through the app. So that has also helped us reach further, uh, penetrate into the country, as well as has provided the customers, patients with the choice of coming or not coming to the hospital, at least for the basic, uh, you know, uh, consultation that they may have. Got it. Uh, Dr. Agarwal, you know, while India has become a very affordable healthcare destination for the world, most of the services are still inaccessible or uh, not so affordable for our own citizens. What do you think, in your opinion, can be done to uh, make healthcare more affordable to Indians? Uh, Arvindaji, uh, you're absolutely right. Uh, and I do not, uh, you know, uh, I, I agree with you in terms of the accessibility and uh, cheapness of the service. But just again, a context is uh, India healthcare is second to none in the world today. Uh, many of our neighboring countries like Iraq, the Middle East, Africa, Maldives, Mauritius, uh, they all reach out to India for the healthcare services, uh, which also shows the quality of healthcare professionals that we have in the country, as well as the quality of healthcare systems, at least in the private healthcare that we have. 
as far as uh, as far as uh, you know uh, uh, we are still out of pocket i think so in 2001 70 74% of the money was out of pocket for indians that has sort of reduced to around almost like a 60 58 60% depending upon which city you are in uh, so i think so the accessibility uh, uh, will improve as the insurance sort of penetrates uh, deep into the country i think so the government has done a great job by launching ayushman bharat Uh, wherein uh, you know the insurance product was made available at a very reasonable cost to more than 50 crore indians who are at the bottom of the pyramid uh, which gave them access to healthcare at a very reasonable cost i think so it is going to be a public private partnership in a way uh, that will help us uh, uh, you know uh, reach out to more indians uh, even the digital has actually now helped because uh, you can just have without walk, without coming all the way to a tier one city a guy in a rural and you know the mobile penetration is huge in this country Uh, sitting uh, in a small village he can actually have a tele consultation with the best of the doctors in the country at a very reasonable cost so i think so the digital penetration as well as the government initiatives on ayushman bharat uh, will all help us uh, driving you know uh, accessible healthcare to all i do not want to wo- use the word cheap i want to use the word quality healthcare uh, for delivering quality healthcare in the country so uh, that that will be my uh, maybe uh, answer to this question hatinder I'm glad you brought up insurance uh, as a in the conversation because if you look at it I mean you know while we have the rich and the famous who have access to healthcare and they have they can afford to pay the insurances and we have the government taking care of the uh, the lowest uh, segment of our society in India we have a very huge middle class you know and yes. we have a challenge either they are not insured or they are not sufficiently insured and with the rising cost of healthcare uh you know one of is there an opportunity for hospitals to play a role in this particular sector um uh, uh, again it's a, it's a very good question harbinder ji about hospitals what we do at the hospital is obviously uh, we try to educate the patients about uh, insurance uh, manipal as a group already has uh, you know uh, invested in uh, uh, in insurance by manipal signa so we have do have an insurance arm but insurance uh, i think so a lot of the pri- uh, general uh, government insurance which is the the national insurance uh, which actually uh, cover almost 70 80% of the middle class uh, the working class population of the country i think so the problem more comes not in the uh, 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 you know organized work class i think so the organized work class gets covered by the corporate uh, they have access to insurance policy they are more literate is the unorganized people actually uh, who actually do not sort of get the uh, access to the insurance product or are aware of the insurance product but i think so again the digital uh, medium that even the insurance companies have created the government is talking about and we talk about at the hospitals uh, are trying to educate the customers of the benefit of having insurance we have seen that the you know in a tier one city like a bangalore or a delhi uh the amount of out of pocket has actually come down quite dramatically uh, the problem is in tier 2 tier 3 cities where people still believe that insurance is a cost not an investment uh, that creates a problem i think so some of the tax benefits that are given to the middle class also in uh, insurance is helping them probably the government can think about waiving of the gst on insurance premium to make it more uh, accessible to everyone currently i think so the insurance pre- uh, premium uh, is gst payable whereas the healthcare services are not gst payable so maybe there is a there is a you know reason for uh, waiving of the gst on insurance premium to make it a more affordable to the people of the country which will help them access to quality healthcare so i'll ask you one more question i mean you have these asset light models which have suddenly come up which are focused on elective surgeries etc and uh, when they face this challenge of people not being able to afford the surgeries they are now looking at microfinance uh, models which they are building up and uh, or innovating within this their own setup what is your thought on that uh, uh, not only them actually we partner uh, with a lot of uh, even bajaj finance for example we partner with a lot of nbfcs uh, in providing solutions to the patients when they come to the hospital in case they want a zero in fact we are absorbing the one time cost uh in case if they want to do uh, we provide them a 0% emi and those benefits again uh, 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 it's just the it's just the mindset of the person walking in uh, for healthcare he is not in that frame of mind uh, at that point in time because he's trying to save his his or own loved ones Uh, uh but we try to have the people from the nbfcs also partner with them to educate them uh in terms of uh, you know providing them some assistance in terms of the financing i think so that's working well but still early days if you ask me there are a lot of uh, startups that have come up uh, who are providing this financing 
but again they are picking and choosing what they want to fund and what they want to finance so i think so uh, uh, we are in the start or the cusp of a health tech revolution in the country especially because after the digital that has come about and i think so as more and more pe and uh, fii money come into the country i definitely see a huge potential for uh, you know some of this financing being easily available like a microfinance uh, to the uh, to the people who want uh, access to healthcare got it so from the perspective of management of hospitals how has digitization of finance helped in building agility in finance management of a healthcare business true uh, so I, i i did touch upon something on the shared service but uh, we have uh, as far as manipal and i think so uh, most of the leading healthcare organization have invested in a very smart uh, health information system so the way the hospital works is uh, we have a billing system uh, which creates which has all the patient id information which is linked to his or his tests uh, all the doctors write in on to onto that system which is then linked into uh, uh, you know uh, a financial system which is sap in our case or maybe any other uh, any other uh, uh, erp package that the companies may sort of invest in so uh, the first thing is to invest in a very high end a uh, best of the class hospital information system because that provides a lot of information it uh, it actually dovetails into any of the uh, apps that you want to build in it gives a lot of information to the patients as well so for example on a manipal app you can do a video consult you can actually set up an appointment you have all the reports there you have the trend analysis of you know uh, how your reports have moved on not only for you but also for your loved ones you can use the same app to make a payment so if you have an his that can do all of that it actually becomes a very clear link uh, that is happening which also provides us more penetration and also provides less billing time because you don't have to stand in the queue uh, to make a payment for an opd you can actually do it on the app itself uh, as far as the finance is concerned as i explained harbinder ji in you uh, know first question is that uh, because we have used the robotic process automation and the ocr the latest technology for automating uh, our processes on the accounts payable and the accounts what is that happened is we are actually now saving almost 40% productivity on our finance team uh, at the back end because we are using this technology which is actually freeing up a space uh, at the front end uh, it's actually helping us to invest in more quality resources at the front end who are not managing transaction but managing the hospital operations which also brings a lot of value to the organization value to the stakeholders and as well as improves the quality of uh, uh, input that is given to the hospital administrators to run the business got it so while there are i can I, i can understand and i can sense from your conversation that there are huge benefits uh, in bringing digital finance in managing the hospital or for that matter any business but what are the some of the risks that are associated with digital transformation and is there a way to mitigate those risks yeah arbinder ji and uh, uh, i think so that's a very critical question because sometimes people uh, go after robotics and bots uh uh because this is the fad word today right that if you do not have a board if you do not doing rpa then you are not it uh, i think so the most uh, uh, uh danger is actually cyber security uh, and the cyber security is critical because you are managing patient data the data privacy is extremely important it is also governed by the law in the country uh, so we have actually invested a lot of our money is in ensuring that our data is protected through firewalls and through multi level uh, checks Uh, we also have a very very strong disaster recovery plan in case if something goes wrong which is not in the same state so we have a uh, you know drp uh, policy in place we have a bcp policy in place so first and for all securing the data is extremely critical the second thing actually which is more soft touch and which is more human is uh, sometimes digital transformation the people can think about that they will lose their jobs and this is my personal feeling uh, when we launched the digital transformation uh, in the company through finance uh, the first thing that we did is we branded it uh, we got the people along and, and a lot of communication went saying that this is not to replace you but to add value to your job to take out the monotonous tasks that you do on a daily basis to add quality to your work so i think so a lot of communication is required uh, for the companies to get into digital transformation we did that we branded it we for example in manipal we call it project dishti so any automation projects get under project dishti which creates a lot of excitement and people engagement in the organization as well so if you ask me the the uh, biggest threat in terms of outside is cyber security as you get more and more digital data and in- internally it could be more people communication uh, so we you know I, there's a there's a cost to digitization and there's a cost to manage the digitization on a sustainable basis 
Now, why is sustainable finance important for any organization, especially in healthcare? And how does it provide better returns? I mean, if as a as an investor, as a promoter, uh, whenever you are incurring any cost to better the processes, what are the returns that they can expect? Uh, so, uh, a very good question, Harbinder ji. Sometimes when you talk about profitability in healthcare, it is not uh, viewed in the same in the in, in the good light because uh, healthcare is supposed to also fulfill the social responsibilities to the citizen of the country. Uh, but a very very pertinent question. Sustainability for me is actually uh, ensuring resilience in the organization. I I look at sustainability on two accounts. Uh, one is how do you make your organization more resilient uh, to the shocks that can happen. And we all went through the shock of uh, the Black Swan event that happened on COVID. Uh, people think that hospitals were not affected. Uh, we were majorly affected because once the you know uh, uh, the international revenue stopped and people stopped traveling from intra city, everything came to a halt. Again, we are a cost plus organization, so the costs were incurred, the hospitals were open, but the revenues were not coming through. So it was very critical that uh, the automation really helped because we are very agile to that happening. Uh, we have ensured that all our KPIs are online. Uh, you know, everybody can see what is happening. So it became very easy for us to communicate because, again, as I said, communication is a key in the digital transformation. That communication actually helped us communicate to the employees of what exactly are the steps we are taking to ensure that we are ahead of the curve as far as the Black Swan event was concerned. Harbinder ji, we did not uh, let anybody go during that time. We did not cut salary of our nurses. Uh, our cash position was the same uh, before the COVID. So. We did everything that was required on the working capital efficiency, on you know taking out all the non-spends. So we build in the sustainable, uh, the resilience in the system at that point in time. We're very happy to know that we could do that in a very short period of time, and that resilience uh, you know continues today because a standard BCP did not work during COVID. Uh, today, every employee in the organization knows that if a black swan event happens, what needs to be done? What? Uh, how do you have to tighten your purse? Uh, you should go for more capex productivity uh, to ensure that you are able to juice out your assets, which also is important when you have investors on board. And Manipal is an invested company by private equity, so we have to take care of our shareholders who are investing in the company for the growth of the company. And they were actually also actually very very happy because we have been able to give very successful exits to a lot of our uh, private equity in the last seven eight ten years. Uh, true, not being the last one. Today we have Temasek on board, we have TPG on board, so NIF on board. So we have quality PE investors on board uh, who are very happy with the progress that we have made by becoming India's second largest healthcare provider in terms of owned and managed bed. So they're pretty happy with the returns that they're getting. That's that's really awesome because at the end of the day we have to sustain to be present to be able to serve the people. I mean that's brilliant. Correct. Um, uh, Samirji, what is the future of healthcare industry in your opinion? Where do you see the next phase of growth uh, coming from? Sure, Harbinder ji. Uh, uh, sorry, I, I maybe I've cut you in between. Sorry, Harbinder ji. Continue. No, that's fine. I mean, uh, I ended my question. Okay, sorry. Uh, Harbinder ji, I think so. The healthcare industry uh, in the country is really growing 15 to 17 percent CAGR in the last five, six years. Uh, it, the hospital industry itself, which was a $60 billion industry, has grown up to more than $132 billion, expected to grow to $132 billion in FY23-24. So it is growing rapidly and I do not see it slowing down in the next 10 years itself because of the of the po uh, sheer population that we have, the 1.3 billion people who are getting more literate, who are getting more uh, educated, obviously is also ensuring a lot more disease burden is coming through in the system as well. Uh, plus the shortage of beds that we have, uh, because still as a country, uh, uh, the government is spending almost 2-2% on GDP. It is slated to become 2.5% of GDP maybe in 2025, still way less than what some of the advanced countries which spend close to 8 to 10%. So I do not, I, I do not think that the uh, the space will uh, sort of slow down. According to me, the uh, because of inclusion of digital health and uh, I think so, our, our beloved Prime Minister also launched the National Health uh, you know, Digital Mission, which will also ensure that you have a unique uh, health ID, uh, which will provide all the information and give access to healthcare. Uh, I think so the next level of growth could come from the tier 2, tier 3 and participation of the entire country uh, towards healthcare as we sort of, as the government and the private sort of start investing into primary health centers, secondary health centers in the rural and the tier 3 cities. A lot of those people come to the cities today for uh, treatment 
I think so slowly as we penetrate into the country using insurance products, using Ayushman Bharat, and using the National Health Digital Mission, I think so that uh, the next level of growth will come from there. So one is penetration of insurance policies will bring growth because people will not be concerned about being out of pocket, uh, and the growth of the healthcare across the country is entire to entire. That's that's brilliant. I mean. Uh... sir i want to ask you that you know when we look at the tech industry when you look at various other industries that are you know we've seen mna is happening we've seen ipos happening but healthcare was never seen in that with that particular view but uh, you know then we saw hospitals being taken over acquired now there are hospitals which are looking to go for an ipo is there any mna activity that we are seeing Or going to be seeing this year. Uh, so Harbinder ji, you are right. I think so. But you, uh, you know, uh, healthcare. I think so has got the respect it deserved. Uh, I think so post COVID. I think so people sat up and noticed healthcare. Otherwise, it was sort of taken for granted in my view. Uh, I think so sat up and uh, took uh, notice when it saved lives in the country. And we did much better as a country than any other country in the world, to be honest. And that is when we started getting the respect that we really deserve. Lot most of the healthcare and I am talking about the hospital industry. Uh, Arbinder ji are today listed. Uh, most of them are listed. Uh, the bigger ones, like if you like, look at Max, Fortis, NH, uh, Shalbi, uh, Kims got listed. So a lot of them have got listed. Rainbow Hospital was the last uh, to get listed, which is into uh, uh, into kids' uh, health. So uh, according to me, the uh, uh, M&A activity for Manipal we recently acquired. Uh, we recently acquired Columbia Asia. That was 11 hospitals across the country, which gave gave us the Pan India thing. We also acquired Vikram Hospitals in Bangalore. Uh, we are planning to set up two more hospitals in Bangalore. One more hospital is going to come up in Pune as well. So uh, it's not only M&A. We are looking at organic and inorganic growth both, and we continue to look at the M&A space uh, at least for us. Uh, uh in areas of interest like telangana ap uh, ncr east part of the country and uh, if you see the newspapers arbinder ji i think so a lot of the companies if you just hear i think so max is also looking at uh, you know uh, doing some mna uh, uh, etc so i think so the consolidation of the hospital industry will happen uh, and uh, that is what we are seeing as of today so who's uh bigger brand in your view or should be a bigger brand in your view the hospital or the doctor uh it's a it's a uh, it's a uh, you know if you're t- talking to a healthcare you're talking to the cfo of the company and <laughs> so, but if you talk to a doctor it will be it's a it's a very fine balance arbinder ji I, i'll be honest uh, uh both cannot uh, exist without each other uh, i think so the hospital brand uh, cannot exist without the doctors in it and the doctors obviously who practice in the hospital do not exist without the hospital brand there is a very fine balance and both are required Uh, we have been very proud of the uh, fact that uh, we have always promoted the Manipal Hospital as a brand to ensure that every patient that walks to the door gets quality treatment irrespective of the doctor on board which means that there is a co- careful process that we incorporate before hiring of any doctor uh, uh, we have separate teams who do that to ensure that we have the right doctors on board uh, but having said that a doctors engagement because doctors are the revenue drivers in any hospital it's a very very fine balance and if the doctors don't find themselves to be part of the brand uh, the brand will actually never succeed so it is uh, both have to go hand in hand harbinder So that was my trick question to you, but I think you very beautifully answered it, and uh, uh, you know you're absolutely right that there's a confidence with which the patient needs to come to a hospital with the promise of what they can expect. So with that, I'd like to end our conversation here, uh, uh, Mr. Samir Agarwal. Thank you so much for your time. It has been a brilliant conversation. and very rarely do we get a chance to speak about the business of healthcare or the industry that we are in uh, so i'm glad we had this conversation thank you so much my pleasure thank you very much